Tony Batello, where does he rank among UT's coaches? Now, he doesn't have a championship yet, but you hold him in high esteem. Why and where? Well, I wrote a column last week saying that since I've been here in 1987, other than Pat Summit, uh, Tony Vitello has been Tennessee's best coach. Uh, the counterpoint to that would be, well, he ha- as you said, he hasn't won a national title, but to me, that's not the be-all and end-all, uh, just like the greatest quarterbacks don't always have a Super Bowl ring. Um, I-, I think uh, Vitello, when you look at his body of work and what he's accomplished in a short term, uh, and also compare it with the history of Tennessee baseball, when he took over the program, it was the worst, one of the worst programs in the SEC. And it's so hard to climb from the bottom when you've got so many good teams ahead of you and so many established programs. He did that, much like Skip Burton did at LSU. And I just think he's a total package as a coach. Uh, He works really hard. He's a great recruiter, a really good evaluator of talent. Uh, But most of all, it just is relentless work ethic. But you look at Tennessee's players, he's successful in the transfer portal. He's successful recruiting high school. They've got more probably prospects in this recruiting class than any they've ever had. That's Tony Vitello talking, not me. And we don't know how that will play out if some of those players will go pro. But he's done all that. He's hit the transfer portal, recruited high schools well, developed players. And you look at how players have gotten so many time after time, player after player keeps have developed in this program. Uh, one year, they are like a part-time player. Tavares uh, Tears had, I think, 56 at-bats last season. And he's one of the best outfielders in the game. So, yeah, I just think he's uh, – I just don't think any other coach can match that. It, 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 that's just my opinion. I just, just think he's going to see the best coach other than Pat Summit. Now, that – somebody somebody emailed us, well, are you forgetting General Neyland? Well, as I am, I wasn't enough to cover General Neal, so I, I can't. John was just an in, John was I, I just an intern when clear. General Neilan was around, so it was difficult for him to really soak everything in because he had you know he had to go to school and everything too. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought I made it pretty clear. I, I spelled it <laughs> out uh, in the column, and it was even in a headline that in my time here. Uh, so yeah. So, John, uh, just to throw a few names, uh, we'll start. Um, I'll, I'll let you and Dave uh, riff on uh, one person we might mention. But um, <laughs> I mean, the uh, obvious one's Philip Fulmer. He has a championship, right? Okay, I'll, I'll just get you, you. I will let you two go. You guys covered him. I never covered Fulmer. So I'll let you two have fun comparing Philip Fulmer to Tony Vitello. <laughs> John, I respect the heck out of you. I see where you're coming from. I think Tony Vitello is an absolute diamond in the rough i'm as high on him as you are almost i can't give him the title of best coach in those what 30 some odd years other than pat summit without winning a championship now i have a feeling in about a week and a half we're going to be having a different discussion but right now i can't put him above the well but i winning one national championship doesn't make you the best coach in your sport um, I mean, Les Miles won a national title. Ed Orgeron won a national title. Does anybody think they're one of the greatest, among the greatest <laughs> coaches of all time? Of course not. I, I mean, you can see, you can win. A, I mean, go back to, uh, gosh, I just, I mean, Gene Chizik at Auburn. He won a national championship and got fired a couple of years later. National he fired, win didn't, he get, didn't he get fired the next year? No, it was, it was, no, it was two, two years, years later. But okay. Thanks. Things went south very quickly. Uh, you know, he couldn't keep Cam Newton around. But Gene Chizik, I mean, was considered a really good defensive coach. He's had success as a defensive coordinator. And, but those things happen. I mean, one championship doesn't make mean you're the best coach. Uh, you look at where – look, if you – okay, compare Philip Fulmer. Look at the state of Tennessee football when Philip Fulmer took over the program from Johnny Majors took it over, took it from Johnny Majors, okay? 
I mean, Tennessee was competing. It was uh, tied for two conference championships, was competing for national titles. And Johnny Majors had some horrendously difficult schedules uh, during that time. Uh, so it was already, the program was already in great shape. Philip Fulmer took it to another level. Tony Vitello took over a program where it barely existed. Anybody that wa wandered, if you wandered into Lindsey Nelson Stadium, you did just that. You wandered into Lindsey Nelson Stadium. You're walking around campus and say, hey, what is it? Is that, what stadium is that? Is that soccer field or, uh, oh, it's baseball. Let's go in there. Maybe they're playing a game. We can watch an inning or two. Uh, no, that's okay. Let's just keep moving. So I I just, you know, it was a completely different thing. He, and he took it from ground zero. Also in football, the SEC overall, other than Florida, wasn't as strong as it has been so many times. And as it is now, it was a different kind of league. A lot of programs were down. Georgia wasn't at the top of its game. LSU wasn't at the top of its game. Alabama wasn't. Auburn wasn't on and on. Uh, Tony Vitello took it over when SEC baseball was at its peak, its pinnacle. And, uh, right. you know, he, and he turned uh, Tennessee into the best program. I mean, you can make a case now if you look at college baseball and say, who has the best program in college baseball? A lot of people would say Tony uh, would say Tennessee, and if you'd ask who's the best coach, they would say Tony Vitella. Given where they came from, you make a strong argument. I want Caleb's take, and I, I know nowadays everybody's trying to save money. But uh, that's not the case with your insurance. State Farm, Don Self. Customer service still matters. He's the epitome of perfection when it comes to customer service and taking care of your claim. Everybody's trying to save money, and you can go with lower-priced uh, insurers if you would like to, but that's not the direction you need to go. Just go to donself.net. If, if you're not in his area, he'll send you to a State Farm agent that will take care of you and take care of those claims. Donself.net. Or call 423-396-2126, 423-396-2126, or go to donself.net. Caleb? So, John, um, uh, a couple of names I want to just throw out because it's not like Tennessee has been the gold standard for hiring good coaches the last 30 years. So it's not it's not, it's not not that hard to uh, have Tony Vitello that high up there. Man, but, uh, yeah, Jerry Green. <laughs> Well, I was going to go to basketball real quick because what? Because he's he, this is his seventh year, and it's really only his sixth because we don't because twenty twenty he didn't really coach a season. Um, Bruce Pearl was at Tennessee basketball for six years. Um, would you say Tony Vitello's run in six years with Tennessee baseball was more impressive than what Bruce Pearl did with Tennessee basketball when he took that over over six years? Yeah. Uh huh. I don't really think it's that coach close and don't get me wrong. I mean, Bruce Pearl did an incredible job uh, with the program and, and the two are comparable in their skill set. I think because Bruce Pearl was a great promoter, great at marketing his program. I mean, Tennessee lost a generation of basketball fans and, and Bruce Pearl brought them back and then some. So yeah. In fact, if I would, uh, if I had the next best coach Tennessee's had since I've been here, I would say Bruce Pearl. Okay, I'm going to argue with both of those, John, because much like Tony Vitello, Josh Heupel had a start at ground zero, maybe less than zero. He was like John Travolta in the 80s. And there's NCAA issues. There's everything going on. And look at Tennessee that is producing a Heisman candidate and a possible national championship team, at least a college football playoff team, we would think, in season number four. I don't see how Josh Heupel isn't the best coach walking around on Tennessee's campus. Do you agree or disagree, John? I was just, I was just kind of letting that hang there. I, I mean, <laughs> no, you don't, I, I, think I, that you don't think that. I mean, I, you're high on Heupel too. We're oh yeah, I am. I, I'd be even higher if he'd pick the right quarterback all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so basically is that the differentiating factor 
if if he would have played, uh, if he would have played Nico last year, you would have him above Tony Vitella. No, I would not. I, I don't think it, overall. Again, I, I mean, I just think Vitello's done a better job. He's been to my gosh in the last four years. He's been to three College World Series. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I go, but Josh Heupel, and I am a me. I think he's one of the game's best offensive coaches, but. That 22 team kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, and I give him so much credit for the 2021 20, team, picking up the pieces that uh, Jeremy oh, Pruitt. Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that that team could have crashed to the point where it would have affected them for another decade. Well, I just, yeah, I just, but I don't think Josh has raised the program that much. Another thing, it's different when you're comparing football because Tennessee football kind of promotes itself. You don't have to work at other areas. And Josh Heupel, when he goes to pre- – how many significant comments has, he's ever, has he ever made in an interview, Josh Heupel? Oh, he, oh and then he prides himself. He, he'll leave the press conference setting and say, try to get something out of that. And Yeah, can't. well – no, I mean, that's fine, but I'm just saying in basketball, uh, Pat Summit couldn't have done that in women's basketball because she had to to raise, build her program oh. out of nothing. And I think Tony Vitello had to build his program from the ground floor. He couldn't just coach. So you're he illustrating how much more so you're illustrating how much more difficult his job was than the other jobs. Yeah, because he didn't have to Josh Heupel didn't wor- have to worry about that. He had to worry about picking up the pieces, that, uh, what few pieces uh, Jeremy Pruitt left behind. But he didn't have to, you know, he had to go around and, and speak everywhere and do all these things to get people interested in the program because Neyland Stadium will sell itself and it'll be a packed house. Tony Vitello, I mean, you look what he did with the record. What has he done with attendance? I mean, Tennessee's getting cramming about 6,300 people in the Lindsey Nelson Stadium when it couldn't get 300 in there at one point. And now next year, it's going to hit, it will, you'll be able to get 8,000 people in there. So, yeah, there's just so much more to do in connection with that sport. And then that in turn helps you sell it to recruits. You don't have to promote Neyland Stadium. And the fa- the fan passion in football, it's just there. And so I think there, there's really no com- – we're talking apples and oranges here. Yeah, I, 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 I'm I with you on that, John. I think the last promoter of Tennessee football that was there was Johnny Majors, who I felt was I, – I wasn't around. I was very young, but it seemed like he was a very good promoter and was great in interviews. Um, what always about just the last – Always willing to show up and have a drink with a booster. Sorry. What about what about my last uh, the last one I, before we get out of here because the last good coach that Tennessee has actually had over the last thirty years and there haven't been that many like I said but what about um, what about Rick Barnes where would you would you have Tony Vitello ahead of Rick Barnes Oh yeah uh-huh. there's okay there is a no, I mean, I, I don't think, huh no I mean Rick Barnes I, I mean I would have Bruce Pearl ahead of Rick Barnes. Because just from what Bruce Pearl did, not just in coaching, but in marketing and uh, in promoting, and Rick Barnes is a great coach. He was a, a, a you know, he's a Hall of Fame coach, obviously. Uh, but I'm just looking what he did at Tennessee, where the program was when he got here. Uh, he he did improve it dramatically. He wasn't he's not the promoter that Bruce Pearl was, uh, but you make. When we're talk, having this discussion now, it tells us how much better off Tennessee is in terms of coaching in all sports than it has been in the past when you think about it. I mean, it's pretty solid in coaching. We don't know how the women's basketball coach will do, but in the other sports, they're, they've had a run of success here. Hey, take one moment and hit that like and subscribe button for me. Also, vote on our poll that's uh, on our YouTube page right now, uh, who will accomplish more in their career. Tony Vitello total package with 85%. Philip Fulmer has a title with 15%. 
one five. Does that surprise anybody? Caleb, John, surprises me a little I mean, bit. I, think it's I mean, a championship guy. in football is the value of like seven in baseball, though. So, I mean, there is that. <laughs> John, let me ask you this. If if an athletic director was 100% honest, you gave him truth serum, you said, hey, you can have a Bruce Pearl type that's going to push the limits a little bit, but that's going to give you excitement, that's going to promote the program, he's all that. Or you can have a Rick Barnes type that's there for 30 years, never wins a championship, but has a 30-year career. Obviously, he hasn't been in one place 30 years, but you know what I mean. You can have that consistency and you can have a program that other programs respect. If an athletic director took truth serum and answered that question, who would he rather hire? Uh, he'd rather ha- hire the 30 year guy. I don't know. Bruce Pearl was pretty exciting. And even in Rick Barnes best years, other than getting Dalton connect, it hasn't been exciting. I know, but I don't think athletic directors are that that you know what they look at it as a coach I don't have to worry about. Yeah. They they know everything will run smoothly. I think if you look at the kind of players that Rick Barnes has recruited, I don't think a lot of guys have been arrested among his recruits. Can you think of anybody? And I'm sure you know. Uh now, as a matter of fact, I think as as a whole, Tennessee is recruiting better athletes and i don't know if that's across the board obviously people can't drive in athens georgia but other than that i don't hear about as many people getting kids getting in trouble which makes me think they're doing a better job of covering up quite frankly 